Hello again, everybody. I thought it would be fun to create an updated video on Clonezilla. I've done a number of these in the past, but every now and then it just makes sense to do an updated video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Clonezilla Live to take a backup image of your laptop or desktop, and then I'm going to show you how to restore it. This is great if you want to create a image of your computer with all your favorite applications or settings, or maybe you want to create an image for deployment on multiple computers, Clonezilla is an awesome solution for getting that done. Now before we get started, I just want to mention that the method that I'm going to show you is going to be backing up and restoring images over the network, which means you'll need a file share set up first. And you could have a file server, for example, but you don't have to have one. You could actually just use a, another desktop or laptop as a server, which basically just means it needs a shared folder. You could use Windows and then create a shared folder on that system, or if you have a Linux machine, you could just create a Samba share. Now, also what you'll need is a flash drive because again, we'll be using Clonezilla Live. So I already have my flash drive prepared right here. Basically what you'll do is you'll download Clonezilla. It comes in an ISO image. And then you can use that ISO image to create a bootable flash drive using a tool such as Etcher. I'm not going to show you the process in this video because I already have a video that shows you how to create a bootable flash drive with Etcher. So go ahead and check that out if you don't already know how to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and open up my laptop here, insert my flash drive, and we should be good to go. Now here I'm running Windows on this laptop currently because I am setting up a Windows image so that anytime I show a dual boot video on my channel, then I'll have a Windows image ready to go. But it doesn't matter what type of operating system you're running on your computer, it really shouldn't make a difference because Clonezilla can take an image of just about anything. So I'll go ahead and reboot. And then I'll boot from the flash drive. All right, so basically what you do is you just access the boot menu on your device. I'm actually recording this from real hardware. This will not be recorded from a virtual machine. And this is the boot menu on my computer right here. And this second option right here is my flash drive. I, I don't know what that name means, but I know it's my flash drive because I've gone over this process probably a hundred times now. But you'll see your flash drive listed as something else. You just basically choose that and press enter. And then what you see here is the very first screen that you'll see when you boot from the Clonezilla flash drive. Now most of the time the first option is fine and if you don't press anything it will actually automatically choose that option for you. One other option that I like a lot though is if you go down here to other modes of Clonezilla Live and press enter. The fourth option down allows you to start Clonezilla and copy the entire application to RAM which means that you can actually remove the flash drive after it finishes copying, which might be convenient to you, uh, just something I thought I would point out, but I'll go ahead and go back, and then I'll just choose the first option right here. So what's going to happen is it's going to ask you several questions, actually more than several, as you go through here, and I'm going to walk you through the process first of saving the image, and then restoring it. So the first screen is just basically asking you to choose your language. So you just press enter on whichever one that is. You can use the up and down arrow to make your selection. In my case, it's defaulting to the US keyboard layout. And you could just basically press enter to accept that default, or you could go down here and change your keyboard layout if you're using something else. So now what we'll do is start Clonezilla. And now we get to choose what we actually want to do. So on this screen, we have several options. Now we're going to choose the first option, which allows us to work with our disks and partitions using images, just like it says. Another option worth noting is the second one right here, which basically gives you the option to copy from a disk directly to another disk. This can be useful, for example, if you have a source disk 
that's set up exactly the way you'd like, and then you have an empty disk that's plugged in, for example, another hard drive, you could basically copy directly to that disk. But we're going to choose the first option to work with images. Now here we have another selection screen, if you haven't seen enough of those already. The first option is worth pointing out because what that allows you to do is to use a local device like an external hard drive or another flash drive to use as the target to save the image onto. That's very useful if you don't actually have a network share or the ability to create one. You can even use SSH if you know how to do that, which might be convenient. But for us, we're going to choose Samba Server as the target for our images. So I'll press Enter on that. So at this point, it's asking me which network card I would like to use because Clonezilla knows that since I'm using a Samba server, I'm going to need some sort of network connection to reach it. Now the first option is a standard Ethernet card, and the second option refers to wireless. Now unfortunately, in my experience, Clonezilla doesn't handle wireless very well, so I don't recommend that. I always just reach for an Ethernet cable, which is what I've done. I actually plugged in an Ethernet cable into the laptop. So we're going to choose the first option. Now you can get wireless working, it's just overly complicated, not very user friendly, so I always feel like it's just better to go with the first option if you can. So I'll press enter on that, and then I'll choose DHCP, and it should automatically get an address. So at this point it needs to know what server or target machine is actually hosting the Samba share that we are going to be storing our images onto. You can enter an IP address if you'd like, but if you have DNS set up, you can actually enter the name of the machine as well. So what I'm gonna do is back this out, and my file server is just simply called storage. I guess I wasn't very clever when I named it, but that's what it's called. Now, the reason why I'm able to put the name of the server here, again, is because I have a DNS server set up. It knows which machine is called storage and will route me directly to that machine. In your case, either you could put the name here, like I mentioned, or the IP address of the target. Either way will work as long as it's a valid entry, so I'll press enter. Now unless you're using some sort of Windows domain or something like that, you probably don't need to put anything here, so I'll just go ahead and bypass it. And now it's basically asking me what the user account is for my file share. If the target machine is using Windows, you could just put in your Windows username here. And if you're using Samba on Linux, you can just put in whatever the username is for that. Now in my case, I can put whatever username I want here because the file share that I'm going to use is completely wide open. So I'll just change it to something random to show you. So I'll just say maybe I'm a Dalek, whatever, press enter. Now it wants to know what the target directory is for the Clonezilla image, which is essentially the same as the share name. It defaults to images. In my case, I do have a file share named images. This will work. But if you name your file share something else, just go ahead and put that name right here. So I'll press enter. And then for this, I basically just press enter to accept the default. And then I accept the default here as well by pressing enter. Now it's just giving you a heads up that you are about to be required to put in the password for the user that has access to that file share. So I'll press enter. And then here at the bottom, it's asking me for the password. Now in my case, like I mentioned, my images share is wide open. Now it's not public and it is restricted by subnet and VLAN, but for the purposes of this, I don't actually need to press anything for the password. I'll just press enter. And in my case, it was able to make a connection. Again, the server name is storage in my case, and the share name is images, as you can see on the bottom of the screen. And it shows that I have 1.2 terabytes available in that file share, so I should have enough space to hold this image. So I'll press enter. Now, you can choose between beginner or expert mode. I'm just going to choose beginner mode. There's more options that you can do in expert mode, but I'm not going to go over that right now. I'm just going to choose beginner by pressing enter. 
And then here what we want to do is choose the first option, which is Save Disk. Now one thing that I want to point you in the direction of is the existence of this option right here, which I'm not going to go over in this video, but I wanted to give you a heads up that this is a possibility because what this option allows you to do is not only save an image, but it allows you to create a zip file image that actually can be used to create a bootable clonezilla that has the image built in. So effectively, you could create a bootable restore media for your computer that has clonezilla and the image, which allows you to skip pretty much most of these steps and just uh, skip right to restoring the image, which is actually pretty cool. But I'm going to choose the first option to save the disk. And now we'll give it a name. So I'm just going to call mine Windows Image. You can call yours whatever you'd like. I put an underscore there just because it's habit. Us Linux people, we just seem to hate spaces for some reason. But you can name your image whatever you'd like, and I'll press Enter. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to take a minute to mention my sponsor and cloud infrastructure provider, Linode. Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, or project in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux power user or just a beginner, you can use Linode. You can start from scratch and fully customize your server for any application or use Linode's one-click apps to deploy game servers, WordPress sites, personal VPNs, and much more. You can even upload and run your own image. Linode comes with amazing 100% human, 24 by seven customer support by phone or support ticket, along with hundreds of docs and guides to help you get started. Sign up to get $20 free on your new Linode account with the code LEARNLINUX19 or by signing up with the link in the description. I really appreciate Linode's sponsorship of my channel. They're awesome. Definitely check them out. Now, let's get back to the video. It's asking us which disk we would like to take an image of. This computer only has one disk, so I only have this one option. And you'll notice that there is a star on the left side, which basically means that that's the item that is selected. Again, it's the only option, but if you had multiple hard drives here, you could use the up or down arrow to select which disks you would like to take an image from, and then mark your selection by pressing space. But I'll go ahead and press tab over to OK, and then press enter because this is the right choice. I'm not going to go over this in any detail here, but effectively if you can choose to run a file system checker on the source hard drive before you create the image if you'd like. But in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. Now this first option here allows us to check the saved image. I do recommend that you choose to do that. Yes, it does add more time to the process of saving the image, but what it'll actually do is after the image is saved, It'll go back and it'll just double check that the image was saved correctly. So at least you'll have the peace of mind to know that you have a valid image. So I'll go ahead and choose that by pressing enter. You can also encrypt your disk as well. That's beyond the scope of this video. I'll just press enter, but I wanna make you aware that this is actually an option. At this screen, it's asking us what we would like to do when the process is done. We could tell it to automatically reboot when the image is saved or shut down. I pretty much always choose the first option because I like to take a moment and just take a look at everything on the screen. I don't want it to shut down on me until I'm ready for it to do so. So what the first option will do is just ask you after the image is saved what it is you'd like to do and then you can make your selection then. So I'll press enter. On the bottom it's basically saying press enter to continue so I'll press enter. Now it's basically just confirming that we do want to continue. So I'll press Y and then enter. And now it's saving the image. You might see the progress bar go to 100% more than once if you have more than one partition. 
And having more than one partition is very common, especially with Windows and some Linux distributions. You'll probably have a recovery partition, maybe a boot partition. So it'll go to 100% a couple of times before all is said and done. All right, so at this point, the image was saved successfully, and now it's checking the image to make sure that it was saved properly. So I'll go ahead and let this finish. All right, so it looks like everything was successful. Near the top, you can see the verbiage, all the images of partition or logical volume devices in this image were checked and they are restorable. And then it gives the name of the image. So it looks like everything is all set. So I'll press enter. So at this point, it is giving us an option to power off or reboot the system now that saving the image was completed. Now what I'm going to do is choose the fourth option right here, which will basically restart Clonezilla, and then I'll show you the process of restoring the image. So essentially, you would boot the computer from the flash drive again, and then do what I'm about to show you to restore the image. So I'll press enter on this. And now we're back to the screen where we start Clonezilla, so I'll press enter. Just like last time, we'll choose this first option right here to work with images. Again, we'll choose Samba Server. And just like before, we'll put in the IP address or the name of the server that is hosting our image file. So I'll just back this out and put in storage because again, that's my file server, so I'll press enter. I don't have a domain, so I'll skip that by pressing enter. So on this screen, it's asking again for the username that has access to the file share where your image was stored. In my case, it doesn't matter. I could put whatever username I want. So I'll just put in the doctor. Press enter. And again, it needs the name of the file share. It defaults to images like I mentioned earlier. And that's true in my case, so I'll press enter. Enter again for the default version of the SMB protocol. Then enter again for security mode. Enter for this. And then you put in the password of your user, and in my case, this is an invalid user, it doesn't matter, the share is wide open anyway, I'll press enter. And again, we have a successful connection, enter again. And just like before, I'll choose beginner. And where the process actually forks or changes is right here, because we want to restore the disk that we just saved, so we'll choose the third option, restore disk. So here it's showing us all of the Clonezilla images that we have in our file share. Mine is the third one. That's the one that I saved earlier. So I'll press enter to restore that. Now it's asking us what the target disk is that will receive that image. I only have one option anyway, so I'll press enter. Now here it's asking us if we would like it to check the image before restoring. And this could be a good option if you want to make sure the image is valid before you restore it. In our case, we did check the image when we saved it. We should be fine. So I'll go ahead and choose no. And here it's asking us what we would like it to do when all is said and done. And basically the first option, again, will just allow us to choose what to do after that. So I'll just press enter. Enter again. And it's asking us if we're sure that we'd like to continue, because if we say yes here, it will wipe out the disk in our computer and replace the contents of it with what's in the image. 
And that shouldn't be a problem, so long as you did actually choose the right drive, but I'm leaving that up to you. I'll press Y and then Enter to continue. It's giving us another disclaimer just to make sure that we really do truly want to do this. So I'll press Y and then Enter again to confirm. And here we go. The image is restoring, and again, it will go to 100%, most likely a few times at least. So just be patient and let the process continue. I'll fast forward this, and then I'll be back as soon as it's done. All right, so it looks like everything is complete. So let's go ahead and press enter and see if it actually boots. So I'll choose the reboot option and let's see what happens. All right, we have the weird Windows swirly thing on the bottom of the screen, so that's a good sign. And there we go. Looks like this was a success. So the process is all done. You know, I really love Clonezilla. It basically allows you to set up your computer just the way you like it, create an image, and then you always have that image as a starting point containing all of your settings and favorite applications baked right in. And then you just restore it if you ever need to. Couldn't be easier. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And let me know what you think of Clonezilla in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books, and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.